How's it going? Hi. Now I think it's time for a little magic. Selling little bottles of love potion number nine. You don't believe me? So we meet this guy, Paul, who goes to see a palm reader on the corner of 34th and Vine. She points out that his love line is pathetic. There are no women here. Are you a boy kissy boy? In fact, it's so bad that she has to take a picture of it to show people. But she wants to help him, so she gives him a sample of love potion number eight that he's supposed to drink to make the opposite sex find him irresistible. I'd sooner believe the single bullet theory. And then he and his friends go to a bar after, where they ask him if they saw him on a date the other day, but apparently he was just on a lunch break with a coworker. A coworker that he has a massive crush on. Has anybody ever told you how beautiful you are? So since he's single, and they have to live vicariously through him, they pay him money to go talk to a woman at the bar. But she's like, why do you think I would want to talk to a nerd like you? Seriously, you're embarrassing yourself thinking that someone who looks and dresses like you could have a conversation at a bar with somebody who looks and dresses like me. Are you crying? No. Yes. That bitch. But she does make him an offer. I'll go home with you tonight and be your total sex slave if you can answer one question correctly. Who designed this talk? And of course, he doesn't know the answer. Oh, so he tries a love potion so he won't be embarrassed anymore. No, he throws it away. But his friend calls and apologizes for him getting embarrassed, and even though he's already gave him $100, he spent, let's say, another 20 on a hooker. I think it's incredibly overpriced. While he makes her a drink, she scopes out all the expensive stuff in his apartment, and then goes to freshen up in the bathroom. But she leaves after he just wants to talk. He's awfully good with the ladies, isn't he? Later that night, his cat gets into the garbage and licks some of the potion when it mixes with some milk. It meows at an open window, and every cat of the opposite sex within hearing distance comes into the apartment to see Paul's cat. The next morning, he goes to see his coworker Diane, you know, the one he has a crush on. I think she is definitely Paul's type. She does experiments on chimps, and he wants to try the potion on them. Well, they forget to dilute it, and the male chimp goes crazy, breaks through the wall, and then, um tires himself out. And thank God the female chimp got into her cage so quick. He's a horny bastard, isn't he? So they learn for sure that it has to be diluted, because not only will it do that, but it makes members of the same sex hostile. So now they want to see what the potion can do in the real world, but they need human test subjects. So they decide to use it themselves, because anybody else would use it for immoral or selfish reasons within like five minutes. And then Diane immediately uses it to get out of a ticket. It took six minutes. And then she finds out that her insurance has been canceled, so she goes to the office to have a guy fix her policy, but the branch is run by almost all women. But she does find a gay guy, who the potion works on, so now she knows that it's based on your biology, and not your sexual preferences. She also gets her insurance back, thanks to... Dick. She then bumps into a rich guy, who's so rich, he's able to park on the sidewalk. What do you do? What do you do for a living? He follows her, and starts buying her crap. And because he's the only one who's heard her speak, when he says... You are the most beautiful woman I have ever seen in my life. Everyone looks at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're kidding. When they get to her car, he says that he owns the company. So she takes the extremely expensive necklace he got for her as an asshole tax. My car stalls unless I keep my, my foot on the gas. Then he asks her to go to a party with him, but she's way underdressed, so he takes her shopping. So you pick relationships based on clothing and gifts? No, we pick them based on personality. <laughs> At the party, all of the guys are swarming around her, and this prince hears her giggle, so now he wants her too. Well, she's not off to a good start. What does Paul do with it? Well, he wants to get his confidence back, so he goes back to the bar and gets revenge on the woman who embarrassed him. And after getting women just to speak to him, he launches forward and visits every bedroom in a sorority house. So he gets arrested, as he should be, just a sick world we're living in, sick people. But he's released when Diane goes to the station. He gives her shit about all the changes and things she's getting while on the potion, but she's like, you just got arrested in a sorority house. And he's like, it was just for being there later than I was supposed to. I'm not a pervert. And then they get into a limo and go to an art gallery where he decides to play strip poker with a whole bunch of debutantes. Here's a four. The next day, they meet at the park to talk. She says the Prince of England proposed which is funny because a few weeks ago, she always thought of herself as ugly. And he's like, I never thought so. That's why I took you out on a date. And she's like, what date? 
and he tells her about the lunch they went to and that he never asked her out again because she said she kind of had a boyfriend. So she had the Prince of England as her side piece? No, her kind of boyfriend was just some asshat that would call her up after he struck out at the bar. And then he would always leave right after. Gotta go. But now that Diane knows that he was interested in the busted version of her, she dumps the Prince of England Ow. and they go out on a real date. And then they go on a few more and a few more to the point where he's ready to propose. Last week, something happened between us. Well, we became friends. He goes to pick her up for a weekend getaway, but she's not there. And then she won't answer or return any of his calls. But one day she does call back and he rushes over to her place. It turns out that that asshat Gary saw her out on dates with the prince and finally decided to give her a real shot at a relationship. And since she's been letting him use her for 10 years, she's willing to see what that looks like. Well, why'd you tell him that? I thought we became uh, more than friends. But he meets up with her a few days later to talk, but Gary calls and says he doesn't want her to talk to him anymore. So she leaves. You're coming right back, right? He goes home to find the hooker pretending like she wasn't trying to break into his apartment. And he invites her in because he's polite to everyone, even asthmatic prostitutes. <laughs> You've got damn power! But when she goes through his medicine cabinet, she finds the potion. And the next thing he knows, he's loading his stereo into her pimp's car. He also gave her the love potion and told her how it works. So now we know that even if you know for a fact that you're under the spell of the potion, you still can't stop yourself from doing what they want. Really? And four hours later, he's like, what the hell did I just do? So you can only imagine what all the sorority girls thought. She will wind up with her heart broken or pregnant. Do you have a plan B? He also realizes that Diane is under the influence of the potion, so he goes back to the gypsy, who confirms that she sold the rest of the bottle to Gary. How did he find out about it? Well, apparently she wrote about it in her journal, but he never actually cared about her enough to read it before she got hot. Is that a new couch? No, I've had it about a year. And then he never had access to her apartment after she started dating people. Stan, there's a Gary Logan out here to see Miss Farrow. I'm sorry. So I'm not really sure how he read it. Breaking and entering. Uh, assault. Battery. He calls Diane, but she thinks it's impossible. So he tells her to just go away from him for four hours and see how she feels. But she tells Gary what Paul is saying. Oh, no! Don't tell him! He's the enemy! He tries to confront her on her way out of her house instead of, you know at work, but she won't listen to his very compelling argument. Look, it'll wear off someday, and you will be pregnant, and you'll be married, and you'll have that asshole's children! Apparently he forgot the first-hand knowledge that you have no control over what you do when someone's using the potion on you. I couldn't believe how powerful an influence the potion had over me. I mean, I would have done anything to make Marissa happy. So when that doesn't work, he goes back to Madame Ruth, who offers him love potion number nine that will purify and make their love everlasting. Unless she never loved him, and then she'll hate him forever. But he's willing to risk that, and has his friends meet him, where he tells him his plan of assaulting her to get her to drink out of the same glass as him. Yeah, there are four of us, and I think we could take them. But they don't believe the potion is real, even after seeing the huge boost in confidence of their friend, and of course, him even knowing women now. Because hey, you know, women, they don't want to swallow. But luckily, the hooker shows back up to get more of the potion, and he tells her Gary has it. And his friends all fall in love too, but are pissed four hours later when they don't have their wallets. So now they're all on board, and they go to assault Diane. Beat the living shit out of her. No! But she's not there, because she's at her wedding. Max, she's marrying him? The maid of honor is there to pick up her lucky peacock feather, and they fill her in on what's happening. She gets Diane to drink the potion, but Gary comes in and drinks from it too. Well, that's kind of depressing. Madam Ruth tells him to drink from the glass too, and then kiss her, and she'll fall in love with whoever she loved more, but hate the other one. When he goes to do it, the hooker's by the door, so he has to run past her, holding his ears and screaming, thus entering the room Diana's in, looking like a crazy person. I'm not insane. No! No! And thank God no one is cleaning up after anyone, because the glass is still where he put it. But when he tries to kiss her, Gary holds him back. He's jealous! He's holding me back! But the hooker's in the lobby, and gets Gary to give her the rest of the potion. But since he's on it, she falls in love with him, but number nine kicks in, and he starts tasting mule sweat, or possibly just the inside of a hooker's mouth. Which, you know, I imagine is pretty, pretty terrible. But he runs off leaving her confused and wanting him. If the spell is broken, why wouldn't he get the potion back? Shut up! If you just open mouth kissed a prostitute, you'd want to find the nearest Listerine bottle as fast as humanly possible. Usually. Not always. So she thinks she can double down and drink an undiluted dose to win him over. She walks in on the vows. So they actually love each other? 
Well, I'm sure after 10 years of casually seeing each other, they feel something, and number nine just purified that. Unless he has a gun. But it seemed like their relationship was more like, well, I'm bored, and there's nothing else to do, so I might as well do you. God, it sounds like a fairy tale or something. So anyway, the hooker walks in on the vows, and all the attention turns to her. The men all want her, and the women all want to kill her. The men all start chasing her, and she heads to the police station where she thinks she'll be safe. But Paul's waiting in booking and sees him coming, so he covers his ears and waits for the crowd to pass. When they're gone, he breaks out of jail, steals a car, and heads back to the wedding. So, you are coming to the party. He then rushes in, kisses Diane, and punches Gary while Diane is hugging him. Is he dead? No, he's asleep. <laughs> he then goes outside to see if it works, but gets upset that it didn't work after five minutes. I mean, how dare she have to search a huge building looking for him after being assaulted and forced to consume a magic potion against her will after being kidnapped with a lesser potion by a different guy? I could have strangled her. So they did all this horrible crap and we're supposed to be happy for them? Well, that's essentially what rom-coms are. Two pieces of human garbage who find each other and get out of the dating pool so everybody else can enjoy it. That's nice. What happened to the hooker? Did she have to run for the whole four hours? Nah, she's fine. She just asked everybody to play with their nipples by a dumpster. You're gonna subscribe now, aren't you? You guys gonna help me now or what? Goodbye now. You'll be back.